Welcome back everyone, I'm K Plays Games, and we're back with more Surviving Mars. S when I left you, we had built this. This is our entire Martian colony. No humans, couple of drones, few little trucks milling around. But we did at least get the oxygen and water generation sorted out, and we're slowly making fuel to refuel our rockets so they can go back to Earth and bring us some humans. And the very last thing we did was plonk down this concrete extractor to produce more concrete. So, what's the plans for today? Well, we're going to go and get our flatbed truck to go and pick up all the surface metals that are lying around all over the map. The explorer will keep an eye out for any anomalies we uncover. We uncovered quite a few anomalies so far and they've all been really good, useful ones. And our Drone Commander, I think, will start constructing ramps onto these plateaus because we are going to want to get up here eventually. A, because there's probably going to be anomalies and B, maybe some surface metals and other things we want. So let's just plop a ramp in here. Okay, so we right click and go to Landscaping, Ramp, and we want it as small as we can really. There are colonies over here. We said we were going to come over this way to get this underground metals deposit at the end. Not flat, not flat, not flat. Okay, here. So hold shift and just drag it until it stops saying it invalid placement. Okay, and this will get us all the way up to the top of this plateau. It's going to produce 281 waste rock. And it will be like a huge scar on the landscape, but it can't be helped. Right, let's tell the drone commander to come over here, and again, we'll place down a waste rock dumping site for it to store all the waste rock. Right, let's kick it into high gear. Now, one thing we haven't got at the minute is a drone hub. So drones at the minute are just being controlled by these two rockets. We do have a prefabricated drone hub, but this will need more power than we are currently generating. But we know that we've got lots of metals sitting around in the map. So I think we'll build some more solar panels just outside the dust radius of this building. And just go for three, I would think. Now we have to think carefully about where we're going to put this drone Sector hub. Scanned. So I think our dome is going to be, our first dome is going to be over this way a little bit. Because we don't want it to be getting covered with dust and there's... We need to make sure it's within range with both of these. And it needs power, so it's outside the dust radius, so we'll just stick it right here. So hopefully this is... Okay good, we're a plus 12 power. So this is charging up really quickly. It's good to see it can a single battery can output twenty. So at night this is not working. That is not working. So at night this is working, that's two. This is working, that's five, so that's seven. This is working. Eight nine and this will be working. Ten, eleven, twelve. So this can output twenty at night, which is fine, because this outputs ten day and night, and this will output another twenty. So we're building up an excess of power during the day and then expending it at night, which is just how you want it to go. Yeah, it's discharging. See, this is going down at 2 per hour at night to keep all these things running. That's good. That means that we can now send the rockets away to do their thing and the drone hub will do drone hub things. See, this can control up to 20 drones. Which is cool. We could... Yeah, let's just reassign the drones. Let's pause the game. Let's select the rocket. And you click here, the minus, to pack the drone. This recalls the drones in. It makes them available somewhere else. And we'll do the same with this one. You will pack all these drones. So now, none of these rockets are controlling any drones. And we've got 
available prefabs, 10, that's 6 from here and 4 from here, so this is the prefabs we have. And we just click on add. So now this is controlling all 14 drones. This frees the rockets up to actually lift off and go places. Maybe the drones are all just sitting around at the minute because we haven't given them anything to do. And this is the flatbed truck. So as I said, we'll go up here. There's 103 metals here. So select the truck with a left click. Do the route. Okay, and we want to cover as many of these metal deposits as we can in this circle. That looks good. Load resource. We just tell it to pick up the metals it finds within that radius. And we want it to drop them off here. Off he goes. Because we're going to be picking up all the surface metals, we're going to need a whole load of metals depots because each one only holds 180. So let's go like tons and tons of them, 10 of them. Let's do that, 1800 metals. See, like almost e each and every square, apart from this one, almost each and every square we've uncovered so far has had surface metals on it. So I think that little guy is going to be quite busy for this foreseeable future. They are scanning stuff quickly because they've got lots of scanners. Although this one has actually malfunctioned, which is a little bit annoying. So what we can do... Yeah, bring our drone guy over here. Because there's surface metals right here, they'll just mine the metals and then repair it from that. So you haven't uncovered the technology that allows them to be autonomous and not need power or maintenance yet, so we'll just carry on. Are there any milestones we can do? Oh yeah, we're slowly fueling a rocket, so as soon as we launch a rocket we'll get 250. Construct a dome, 500, that could be worth doing quite quickly. First human on Mars, 250, so that's a thousand from these four. And first baby will be 500, foods, 250, so it's all stuff that was within an e easy reach. This is one of the dust devils I told you about. They just randomly appear and they'll cover everything in dust and cause it to break. Here we go. Yep, boom. And it's gonna... Oh good, it didn't hit that as well. So that instantly maxes out the repair maintenance thing. I have to wait for the drone. Here he is, he's fixing it. Right, done. Dust devils are really annoying. Just remember, we're not actually producing any of this. If we want any of this, we're going to have to buy it. We are producing metals, but only from surface deposits. We're producing a decent amount of concrete. On that subject, I think we'll get another cu couple of concrete depots as well. Again, I shouldn't really have everything jammed right up against each other, because it will all get exploded. Right, fuel depot. They actually literally explode, so let's plop the fuel depot over there. Make sure that any fuel that comes from here and is excess gets stored away over here. These rockets need 50 fuel, which is going to take an age. That's how much we're producing just mouse over. Okay, we're producing 8 a day, so it's going to take forever to get 50 in this rocket. Okay, I think that scanner got fixed. Yeah, back up to 353 scanning, so we'll send the drone commander back over here. Sector scanned. Still no anomalies. Not that one, it's too steep. This one. So the question is, which type of dome do we want? We talked a little bit before how the basic dome has space for a spire but only six pizza slices. The micro dome only has three and a third pizza slices. The self-sufficient dome just comes with a moxie and a wash evaporator and the power cables and the storage for oxygen and water. We're not really going to use that. I think we want to do a barrel dome because it gives us more space so when we expand our population, we won't actually have to expand into another dome. Less domes means less hassle. Make sure that, that the blue workers ring is within side both of these rare metal deposits. That looks pretty good. Right, plop it there. The drones will all go mad and start building it. This is its building pad in the middle here. 50 concrete. 
20 metals and 20 polymers to build this. I love how the, these build pads never get any big, longer or wider. They just go vertically, so you end up with a huge tower of stuff. When you're building some of the more advanced buildings, it becomes hilarious. You get this huge tower of stuff pointing way up in the sky. So, this dome needs 15 power on its own, and it needs one oxygen and one water. Now, the water is both for drinking and hygiene. And this is just for the dome itself. Any buildings we place in the dome will probably need their own power and maybe other things to keep them running as well. Let's plug it into our power grid. Just touch it like that. See these little drones? They're right in battery. This one here is being charged. Yep. And this battery will go up. Anomaly found. You can build these little rechargers all over the colony if you wish, but I usually have so many drone hubs and they all overlap each other that they're always within range to go and charge up at the nearest drone hub. Anomaly found, that's what we want to hear. Here it is. Oh, it's an, an unlock. So let's get the scanny boy to go and scan that. Okay, we will also have to plug the dome into the life support system, so that means all this stuff. Okay, yeah, we'll just follow it along. The oxygen and water is transported by the same pipes, so this will actually go through the fuel refinery and carry oxygen and water through it. It just uses the building like a, a conduit. So that's life support ready. Power is probably not ready. Probably haven't got anywhere near enough power. Now we could keep building solar panels because they're only metals and but they do turn off at night or we can look into getting w turbines as you see these need machine parts for maintenance but when we have humans we'll be turning raw metals into machine parts in factories so we will be producing some of these and these run at night and they produce quite a lot of power they are quite large anomaly analyzed so let's plop a couple of these down Three of them, I think. That'll be 30 power, which is all the time. Okay, anomaly analyzed. Let's left click. There's more to the barren environs of the red planet than meets the eye. A veritable treasure trove of undiscovered knowledge and wonder. So long as you know where to look. It's a nice passage, but you do get bored of hearing it. Okay, it's unlocked Mars crowd surfing and productivity training. Open the research screen. It's these two here. Gives a billion quid once, once off. And this makes our specialised workers work a bit better. And not priority things. So we'll just let that keep going. Now you, these are quite interesting. Planetary anomalies. This is the planetary anomalies map. This is exactly where our base is. This is our colony here. You Click on it and you get a rundown. If there were rival colonies, we could click on them and see what they had. These are the missions. So, if we had a rocket that was fully fueled, we could pack four drones into it and send it off here. It takes 12 hours to complete this mission. You don't have to do anything, it just does it automatically. And we'd be rewarded with a breakthrough. And what's this one? Send the RC commander away, and this will unlock more stuff in the technology tree. And this one, yeah, send the flatbed. No, no, this is, doesn't fly. This is the scanner. Send the scanner away, and it will unlock more technology. And there are these two as well. Launch the SETI satellite. See, this just gives you money. It takes 50 fuel, 30 of these electronic parts, and 50 metals. It takes four days, four hours. You're rewarded with cash. This one is the one you would really want. 100 metals, 100 fuel, and 100 electronic parts. It takes four days and rewards you with a permanent 400 parasol research increase. I mean, you can do that multiple times, and the second time you do it, you get 300, and the third time, 200, and the second, and any subsequent time, 100. 
It's definitely something to aim at, but it's way out of our reach at the minute. What's this one up here? Capture meteors. Now, this is quite good fun. It costs 60 fuel in two and a half days, and it starts a meteor shower, which will bombard the heck out of your colony, but it will leave behind metals and polymers and anomalies, and sometimes rare metals as well. But we don't have enough fuel to be doing any of that, and when we do, we certainly will. Just access this at any time by going to planet view. Here comes the power. I think perhaps we might want another battery, because if we're going to run things in the dome at night, and the dome itself, we're going to need more than the 20 output that this does, plus the 10 from this. So a second accumulator, we'll just rotate it so it fits in a bit nicer. It doesn't really, but we'll whack it in. Sector scanned. Hey, the drones are waiting for polymers. We run out of polymers, really. Wow. Okay. So I think we're going to have to go to the resupply. We don't have any rockets left. Our own rockets are not fueled enough to go out to Earth, but we've got lots of money, so let's buy a supply pod and fill it full of polymers and launch it. So they don't hold very much. But it will be here in next to no time. Here it comes. 9, 10, 11, 13. I think the, the buildings actually visually accumulate dust so you can tell at a glance how far along they are in their maintenance cycle. Research complete. Hey, that's cool. And the flatbed says he's finished. So let's find more things for him to grab. Go up here, grab all the metals, and come back here. He hasn't even started building the ramp, he's still just extracting all the excess rock. It does take a long time to do all this stuff. Yeah, these are all malfunction now. That's why the scanning slowed down a lot. Okay, just make sure we drop it inside the drone control range, but outside the dust range. There we go. And the pods themselves can be broken down for five metals. So they cost a hundred thousand and you get five metals from them. And the drones are going to take on the polymers and build us a dome. We're not going to be able to get humans until this rocket gets one more fuel and goes back to Earth. Yes. Anomaly found. Watch the dome being built. And here we go. Milestone achieved. Beautiful. Yeah, the lights are on. Street lights. Got some benches. Nothing else. So we have done a milestone. I think I heard there was an anomaly. Oh yes, an eye. These are always the good ones, or the bad ones. They're usually good. So, things I always do when I build a dome, I instantly put two food depots outside it and always on this side so I can tell at a glance how much food we've got. Water and oxygen, you can kind of just build more things, build more moxies or build another water extractor or plop down more moisture evaporators. Food, humans grow themselves inside domes, that's not the easiest thing to come by. You can't just harvest it for free from the atmosphere. 
So, on the subject of the dome, what do we need to do to make this ready for humans? Well, I think it's going to need somewhere for people to live. All the buildings can be rotated with the R and T keys, and if you use the square bracket keys, you can cycle through the different skins and positions. It looks pretty cool. Right, so we'll just get one living complex. Boom. That will hold 14 humans. They, I think the first rocket you send can only have 12. So 14 is probably enough to house everyone for at least for the start. And things they need are services. Humans are really annoying. They demand different things. One thing they all demand is somewhere to go to hang out and eat food. So it comes in the shape of a diner, which the services are listed as dining, social and food. So that's three things they all want. Relaxation, drinking and social. Again, it duplicates the social, but gives them relaxation and drinking. So we'll give them a small space bar. Plop it here. Infirmaries are good, they do medical checks. And they also lower the comfort requirement for births, and this is quite important. So I think we'll just rotate it. Now there is one little hex in the middle here. So what we will do for that is that we'll do a small grocer which satisfies the food and shopping requirements. Just plop it in there. This is what is commonly known to the player base as a service slice. It always has these four buildings. Always, always. Things like the small art store and the electronic store, they consume these advanced materials. So we're not going to be having any of this. Security station, you only really care about if you get renegades, but if you get renegades and you've got bigger problems and having to build a security station, the trick is not to have any renegades in the first place, or if you do, build a micro dome and send them all to live there and just turn it off and kill them. I know, but that's how it's done, because security stations don't really do anything and renegades are a big problem. Again, the casino complex uses electronic parts for consumption or maintenance and it takes up a whole slice so we're not doing that open air gym again is a whole slice it's way too large so this is basically all this, the services that our people are going to need so the small space bar relaxation drinking social dining social food medical checks and shopping and food so food's done twice Social's done twice. Relaxation and shopping are done once. So what else do we need? Food is something we need. Life support. Now, you always start off with the ability to build these hydroponics farms. Their food yields are awful and they only just about produce enough food to fend off starvation and that's all they do. But luckily for us, we managed to unlock and train the indoor farm is one of our first technologies. This is extremely lucky. It's never usually first in the in the list. It's much, much better. Um, there is also an indoor ranch. Now, the indoor and outside ranch were added by a DLC and unfortunately the developers forgot to add a technology or to add them in the farming unlock. So you just get the outside ranch and ranch straight away at the start of the game and the outside ranch in particular is almost game breakingly broken it's hilariously overpowered a single outside ranch can easily feed four or five domes full of people like a couple of hundred colonists so i don't really want to use that it's a little bit too much like cheat mode and also because when your people work outside the dome they suffer a sanity and comfort debuff so don't really want to do that. I mean, some of them are going to be working outside in a rare metals extractor anyway. So there's not much point doubling down on that by making them be outside in the ranch as well. So I think we'll go up for our farm. I'll just rotate it and slap it down right next to the food. 
farms can produce many different types of crops. Some of them are unlocked straight away at the start of the game and other ones you have to research. But all of them are much, much better than hydroponics. So the farm takes a maximum of six people and only needs a single work shift to produce food. And hydroponics need three workers. And if you remember, the hydroponics is really small, so you can pack three of them into a single slice, which means it would need nine workers. Three times three being nine, and this is just one slice on its own, only needs six people. So it's more special efficient as well. So this will be all that our people are going to do in a rare metals extractor. Let's put it as close to the dome. Well, not as close as the dome. So I'd rather have it somewhere over here. Just so the dust isn't quite... Uh, I'm not sure I can. The, the white ring on the outside is, is dust production radius. Yeah, we'll just stick it over here. It's going to hit the fuel refinery, but it can't be helped. It has to be that close to get that deposit. Let's put it right there. It's probably going to need a little power dot. Just like that. Let's unpause and watch the drones build all this stuff. Means that our first 12 colonists are basically just going to be working on the farm and working in these, because these all need staffing as well. There's only 12 people. We'll get maybe three or four on the farm and everyone else just working in here. If we're lucky, we'll get a couple in here. You can't bring in any more colonists until you've passed the 10 day or 10 sol period. Or if you have a baby, it bypasses that completely. That's why we're trying to get the comfort up as high as it can so that before the, the 10 day evaluation period is up, our, our intrepid colonists will give birth and we'll be able to import more people from Earth. They usually start crying about not enough relaxation or playing, because we haven't got anything that satisfies the playing need yet. So we'll put in some gardens on these tiny little 3x3 three three hex things, and we'll just do a pond as well. Just rotate it and slap it down. You know, the diner's reporting, I'm not working because there's no people. Well, yes, that's correct, we know that. And all, th all these will say, oh, there's no people. Yep, no people. No people. You, do, you just right click to turn off the slots. Because we know we're only going to have 12 people. We'll also have to keep an eye on which shifts they work. If they work the night shift, then they take a sanity debuff, and we don't want that. Okay, so I have two people working in the diner, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and two here. There's two, four, six, eight. Maybe two people in this, and then two people out here working this. What wants to build it? And we'll just put this on the afternoon shift. Okay, so we're ready for humans. And this rocket is ready to lift off. It's flashing and it's got the upward pointing arrows. And to blast the off. The explorer made a Oops. thorough scan of the anomaly site, but couldn't find anything unusual. Weird. So it scanned an anomaly and nothing happened. Oh well. Weird. Sector scanned. Right, to launch rocket, you left click on it, and you left click return to Earth. Milestone and the way it achieved. goes. Bye. Come back with some humans. Zoom out and watch it disappear off the top of the screen. And the way it goes. Now when they lift off, as you saw, they make a huge dust cloud and it 
can get in everything. So one way around that is to go into infrastructure and build a landing pad. Just plop it there. It only takes a few concrete, 10 concrete. Later on you can unlock technologies which allow this to become automated. So they are useful things to have. Flatbed says he's finished again, so let's send them back out. Just pick everything up and bring it back. Okay, the crops we can select. Uh, wheat really fast. It consumes 1.6 water. It takes two days and it makes 17 food. And it reduces the oxygen consumption of the dome because it actually produces some oxygen itself. See here the soil quality is only 50% which means that if we had six workers we'd only be producing 11.3 food instead of the 17 that we should be getting. So you can use soybeans and each time you plant these, they do give you some food over the course of the five days and it also bumps up the soil quality. So it's good to do something like one lot of wheat and then one lot of soybeans, one lot of wheat, one lot of soybeans, or two wheat and one soya, and then eventually you'll increase the soil quality. And then you can switch over to potatoes, which is the highest yield, and then soybeans to replenish the 10% soil decrease. That's what we'll be doing. I mean, this says it's working, but it's not. It'll get here, and then as soon as the people come in, it'll say failed harvest, obviously, because nothing's growing. So I think we've got enough power. Yeah, total demand, 38. Power production, 67.1. This uses two. This uses one. It doesn't use any. This uses two. Luckily, the humans that journey to Mars always bring some food with them, enough for a couple of days, just to give you enough time to actually make some wheat. And there's domes here, and you get a quick readout of how many people are living in that dome. This sensor tower is broken again. All the sensor towers look like they're probably broken. Yep. <laughs> Each and every one. Really annoying. I cannot get to that technology fast enough. We just have to put up with the, the slow for now because I really want to get this ramp built. Milestones done this. We're about to get first human on Mars and hopefully produce food and first Martian born. So we should get a thousand. How are you doing for sponsor goals? Nowhere near. It's all fairly advanced things. But luckily none of them are time constrained. Some sponsors will say land a human on Mars by Sol 5 or have a child by Sol 15. I mean it's really pretty tricky to do but this is all just spend five billion export stuff have some advanced buildings bring in some tourists nothing under time constraint at all research complete cool Let's investigate that. So yeah, this is the upgrade we've just trained. Plus 10 power consumption, but 25% better production. And it costs two polymers. And we're not able to build polymers at the minute, so let's not spend them. Flatbed truck's finished again. Send them up here. Grab everything here and bring it back. Off you go. 
Little concrete guy's having the time of his life over here. It's going to take him forever to grind away at this, but it's, it's good. You can never have too much concrete. And you can come over here next. Or not there, that'll keep him quiet for a while, won't it? Okay, the rocket's now arrived back on Earth. So let's investigate a passenger rocket. Okay, as I thought, it carries 12. There are upgrades in the tech tree that let it carry more, and certain sponsors have larger rockets. There are lots of filters you need to do. These are the people that are currently automatically selected to come. But you can filter them as much as you want. The specialists are really powerful. Like if they work in their chosen field, they get like a 10% bonus to their productivity. Let's see. Does it say which are the best workers? Best workers in the farm are botanists, as you can imagine. So ideally, we'd want two botanists and two geologists. And then None of these have any preferred workers. Well, this one does, obviously. Medics. Right, so we're looking for two medics, two botanists, two geologists, and then six r random people just to work in the service buildings. So, passenger rocket and filter. Age group. I don't think we want children, because they don't contribute anything. Definitely don't want any seniors, because they don't contribute anything. I'd rather not have any middle age, because they'll turn into seniors too quickly. So youths and adults is the only age groups I want. And then we go back to the next filter. Flaws. Do, these are all pretty bad. I mean, chronic condition, they lose health every day until they die. Cowards take more sanity damage from disasters. Alcoholics will visit drinking establishments more often and take sanity damage if they cannot and their work performance is lower by 10 because they're hungover. Gamblers have sanity breakdowns when they gamble. Gluttons eat double food. So essentially we don't want any flaws. Turn them all off. Back. Quirks. We don't want two discs. We don't want people to come to Mars only to stay five days and leave. You want them to come and stay. Vegans? Yeah, we'll take it because this only becomes a problem when you're using ranches because they simply straight up refuse to eat food produced by ranches and they will starve to death and die. But we're all right. We've got a farm so we can accept vegans. Gurus are pretty good. They just randomly spread positive traits. I will just leave that as it is. Sex. Yeah, you can determine whether you want male, female, or whatever. Okay, so I think that's it. We don't want children, middle-aged or senior, and we don't want any flaws. So we have 21 matching. So let's, first of all, let's just remove everyone from the selected list, and we will manually select them. We said we wanted a couple of botanists, so let's add you. When you manually add them, it locks them in. And hopefully we get another botanist. Now, Zachary's a male. Let's hope that our two botanists and breed and baby botanists. And we said we wanted some geologists. There's one, and there's two. And we wanted a couple of medics. There's one. Just one. Oh, okay, oh, that'll do. And we'll fill the rest up with no specialisations if we can. Nine. Uh, it's a bit of a problem, but we can overcome it. I think we'll just have some scientists, because we might eventually build a research thing, and we can just s give them a new job. Now, what we haven't done is check the sex of everyone we've been adding. Male, female, female, male, female, 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 male. Female. Female. Okay, too many females. We need some 
some more males. Let's get some scientists, some male scientists. Yep, that'll do it. Got a good mix of females and males, so there's more chance of them having kids. Okay, we have now carefully selected our first 12 colonists, so let's launch and get them on the way. Sector scanned. Anomaly found. Oh, we found an anomaly. Go, go, go. Go and get it. It's an unlock. Yes, I know the sensor towers aren't working. It will keep telling me that they're not working. And I'll keep ignoring it. Well, these are new. It seems you've had some meteorite strikes. Yeah, there's one. And the other one is right there. Again, there are technologies, there are defensive lasers you can build that shoot down meteorites. I don't know where this dust devil came from. I didn't see like the track marks on the ground that indicated a spawning point. But it spawned anyway. See, this one's a little bit dusty. How do you do with the ramp? 90%. Wow. This is nearly full. I'm going to need another smaller one. Boop. What do you just need for maintenance? Metal. Well, annoying. So simple to fix, but this guy's busy doing this. Fat no. Anomaly analyzed. Let's just get the transport to load up on some metals and then we'll send them both out to fix all the sensor towers. Okay, let's see what this unlocked. Four things. Wow, that's awesome. Now, this is genius. I'm going to control left click, stick it on the top. This adds 100 research per sol for each RC Explorer. This will instantly double our training speed. And if you bring in a second one, it will only add 90 and then 80 and 70, 60 and so on. So you can't just spam Explorer AIs. Then we got some surface heater, good if you get cold waves. Adaptive probes, that's pretty good. And this is all just increasing the specialization of your humans. Social basically increases the performance of your humans. Robotics increases your drones. Engineering biotech make your harvesters. And so does physics actually. Physics, engineering, biotech is all your harvesters and farms and life support stuff. Still no breakthroughs yet though. You're back to only having 18 hours of disaster warning because this is the only functioning sensor tower. That can be a problem. If you have something like a, a big dust storm that affects the whole map, it means that rockets can't take off or land or none of your solar panels will work at all. And various other things go wrong. I don't think moxies operate during dust storms as well. Okay, it's set in orbit, it's carrying 12 passengers and 12 food. Passengers and ball will die if the rocket doesn't land in 118 hours. This is just what I was going to get to, talking about dust storms. If you launch a rocket from Earth and you've got a dust storm morning, it's probably, you've probably done the wrong thing. This means it'll be stuck in orbit until the dust storm stops and some of them can last a very long time indeed. They brought 12 food with them. They don't eat one food a day. I think it's 0.2 on average per day each person will eat. So they bring enough for five days, which is enough to build some wheat. I think we'll just do nothing. Yeah. We'll just do nothing but wheat for a while until we build up a, a reserve. Let's zoom in and greet our new colonists. 
Milestone achieved. Here they are running through the plastic slats and bouncing their way down the ramp. They're not carrying their food because they're lazy. And they will run all the way into the nearest dome as long as it's within running distance. That's why I built the dome quite close to the landing pad. New colonists have arrived. Here we are, all 12 of our first people. And hopefully we'll see some drones on the way, yeah. They'll go and empty the rocket of Crop food. Failure reported. Yes, I know. I told you that was going to happen. As soon as you got people, it would be like, oh, the harvest has failed. Hey, and they're going to enter the airlock, change into their work clothes, and here they are. Oops, well they would be if I could work the camera correctly. Let's zoom in. I mean, this is one of my favourite things about the game. You can literally zoom right in. Yeah. I believe the white coat means he's a medic. Yep. And that's the blue ones are non specials. Botanists will be green and geologists will be brown. Yeah, and the scientists are the white and blue. Oh, so they've arrived very early in the morning and they're all going to bed. A little bit intrusive. Oh, she's just... Oh, yeah, they are going to have a nice little sleep. I love just watching my people go about their daily business. Sleep well, guys. You've got a busy day ahead of you. Oh, look at that. It's lovely. Sunrise over Mars. The first humans on the planet. Beautiful. Here comes the food. The, the diner and the small grocer actually consume the food or use it as, as a resource. So they'll, they'll hold some. That's why you won't see any of it on the food storage, because it's all stored in the service buildings. That's okay, the people will go to the service buildings to consume it. Hey, they're going to work. And without us telling them, they've automatically gone to the correct workplaces. Well done. So both the botanists are here, because the game's intelligent enough to know that botanists should work in the farm. Here he is, working. Here's Zachary Jenkins, working away on the farm. He's health 100. He had a nice sleep, so he gained 5 health from that. He had a nice sleep, so he gained 5 sanity. His comfort is only 50 at the minute. This is the base level. He likes being relaxed and going shopping and luxury. Well, luxury, we don't satisfy, but we definitely satisfy his relaxation and shopping. So look at Loretta Schubert. What is she like? Relaxation, shopping, luxury. Oh, and she's a vegan. So she's gained two comfort because we're not producing any meat anywhere in the dome. So this is this is great. Renal's 50, health, she's healthy and she's sane. So gets plus five from that. Let's see what the dining staff are doing, if we can hold alt and move the camera around. No, no, here's someone manning the... There's no customers because everyone's working. <laughs> That's just how it goes. And she's no specialization. Social, relaxation, shopping, exercise. Well, social, relaxation, shopping, exercise. We've got all four of them covered with the buildings we have built. So that's fantastic. Who are you doing in space bar? Jerome Benedict. I know you're a scientist, but you're a bartender right now. Full of hope and determination, the first founders have set foot on the red planet. Yep, we cannot bring any more humans from Earth until we pass 10 days or until we have a child. It's just to evaluate that we've actually got ourselves a, a viable colony. Here's the medics, the medicking up here. Did I just see someone on the roof? Oh no, it was Jerome in the bar. Oops, zoomed in too far and right through your head. 
Sorry, Dalton Lee. I zoomed right through your face. He's a scientist. He shouldn't really be working in there, but I know we've... Oh yeah, we had one medic and one scientist, didn't we? You can manually reassign people to the correct workplace or a different workplace if you want. There's our medic. See, he's got minus 50 workplace specialization because he's in the wrong job. That's just tough. That's just how it's going to be. So the infirmary is only providing 25 comfort. And diner's providing 53. The bar is providing 104, which is fantastic. And the small grocer is pr providing 118, which is also fantastic. It looks like a shift has ended. Yep, it's the afternoon shift, so the morning people are now going for a drink. Good. Yep, please come here. It's 104 service. Oh, there's someone having a nice sit down. That's the medic, I think. Yep. So she's finished her shift and she's just either relaxing, exercising or playing. Looks to me like she's relaxing by the pond, looking outside. Beautiful. And nine souls, 12 hours remaining. Come on, have a child. Have a child right now. Come on, day one, pop one out. You don't get to see what these guys that work here are doing. You just know it's very slowly working. This is going to produce 1.2 rare metals per day, which is not great. I mean, the rocket holds 30, so it's going to take 20 odd days to fill the rocket. But it is what it is. They're quite happy. Yeah, worker performance 101 because they're a geologist working in a geologist building. Where are they going? These are geologists. Yep. Yeah. Looks like they're going to work. Yes, they are. Because it's the afternoon shift. So they change into their spacesuit and they jump out here. They don't really like working outside the dome. As I said, they will take a slight amount of sanity damage from working outside the dome, but it can't be helped. Because these buildings only ever work outside the dome. Oh yeah, we can see them. There they are. In the little Homer Simpson control room. Zoom in, zoom in, move forward. Whoops. Zoom up. Hello. Hello. I know you're outside, but you've just had to cope with it. We need the rare metals because we need money. Well, it's not the money, really, but rare metals can get turned into electronic parts and electronics factories, and that'll be what the next bunch of humans will be doing. These guys are like the farmers and the miners and the service people. The next lot will put another living complex here and then some factories over here. Maybe an, a nursery and a school and a playground. Who's moaning about heavy... Well, yeah. I knew that was going to happen. They're finally building the ramp and they're like, oh, this ramp's really difficult. Right, first of all, let's stop building the ramp and let's go and fix all these things because it's annoying. Oh, yes, I know these solar panels are all out of whack. Whoa, there we go. We saw that one. We saw it and it didn't drop anything. Or did it? Click, click, click. No. How annoying. Hey, now our information bar is more populated. Let's pause the game and have a look. 100 research a day. We know that. We're doing Explorer AI. We're 27% of the way through that. And as soon as we get that, we'll go up to 200 a day, which will be awesome. 23 power. I mean, this just tells you the haul for the entire colony. If we had one power grid here and then a separate little thing over here, this metric would add them together, even though it's not quite accurate, because you need to know what this one is doing and this one is doing. That's where you go down here into the command center and look at the nerdy graphs. Okay, so the oxygen is good, the water is good, even though it's saying zero. The water is a strange thing. It will only ever say a zero or a negative. 
So we're producing 3.6, our max production is 4, which is good because we're consuming 3.6. So as I said, remember this was producing 4 when it was filling these up, it's only producing 3.6. Because the dome needs 2.6, then this needs 1.6 for the crop it's currently growing. Different crops use different amounts of water and produce or reduce the oxygen needs of the dome by different amounts. So wheat is pretty good, makes decent food, doesn't use a lot of water, produces a little bit of oxygen use. But the oxygen is more than fine. Okay, we are, our total oxygen demand is 0 0.7, we're producing 3, so plenty. If the water becomes an issue, we do have two prefabricated moisture evaporators we can plop down anywhere we want. But at the minute, this is keeping track, this is keeping more than keeping up. Now, the problem you run into with these deposits is that they are finite and they do run out and they don't replenish. So when this water is gone, it's gone forever. Same with this, same with this, same with this, same with this, same with this over here. So this is like a hidden timer to the game. The first timer is the surface metals and polymers you can pick up. And then the second one is the deposits. And then the third one, if you've researched it, are the deep deposits. And then you run out. And you think, oh, that'll be game over then. Well, not quite, because there are some very advanced technologies which allow you to become fully self-sufficient. They're, they're like huge mines and gigantic concrete manufacturers that just spin this stuff out of thin air. So that's kind of the race. You're racing yourself. You're racing all these deposits to the bottom of the tech tree. If you get to the bottom of the tech tree first and you still got these deposits, great. If you've run out of deposits before you're at the bottom of the tech tree, it's probably game over. Now this is a pretty good thing. If you, because it's a, a pretty location. Ooh, oh it is pretty, that's lovely. As you can see, it adds 10% comfort boost to everyone living in a dome that's within range of this. So there is a rare metals de deposit up here. We might actually put a vista up here and make it like a a baby maker dome that's just there to have really high comfort and to churn out the babas. Speaking of that, you just click on the dome itself and you get on the dome stats. There's 12 colonists living here out of 14 space, 24 disabled work slots, 2 vacant residential slots. Average comfort 58. Okay, that's not quite good enough. We needed it to be 60. Usually the the comfort for having children is 75, which is hard to get, but luckily we rolled a doctor commander who reduced that by 15. Actually, this should reduce it as well, shouldn't it? Yeah, so that reduces it. Where is the thing I'm looking for? Oh, here we are. Wow, look at that. Birth control policy. You can disable or enable births in a dome. Believe me, you will need to disable it because once they start breeding, they go absolutely crazy and it puts you under huge pressure to constantly expand and you run out of food and other things. Okay, so the birth threshold is only 40 comfort in this dome. That's fantastic. That's a combination of having a medical center and us being a doctor. So 75 base minus 15 for being a doctor to go down to 60. And I think the medical centers reducing it by another 20. So we know that the average comfort is 58 and we only need 40 to have children. So there's five males in the dome that want to have children and seven females that want to have children. And the progress, this is a mod that actually shows you the progress. We're 61% of the way to having a child. So I think we're gonna absolutely smash the founder stage. We might actually get a baby on day two, believe it or not. Wow, these are some fertile people. That is one thing I forgot to filter when we were choosing our people. There are positive traits you can choose. One of them is sexy. And another one is party people. Party people get increased comfort bonus from this and this and this and this. 
And sexy people have a much lower birth threshold. If you get some... And hippies love having lots of gardens, so you just fill it with gardens and have some sexy hippies. Sexy hippie party people, and the babies just absolutely fly out. It's it's not even funny, it's hilarious. How are we doing on wheat? Getting there. Sector scanned. Anomaly found. Way found an anomaly. Oh good, it's research. Good, 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 good. You can't right click and get rid of the founder stage because you're just stuck in it. Yeah, the encyclopedia is something you can read up on. It's almost like an in game wiki, it's really cool. I'm going to speed things up a bit. I forgot we were on super slow speed to spy on our people. Sometimes it is good to just distract yourself from all the goings on and stressing about power grids and and disasters and just stick it on a slow speed and just watch your people milling around going about their lives. He's not even going to bed, he's just sitting on a bench. And the houses are pretty close together, and they're mostly made out of window, so privacy is not really a thing. They've got a nice little kitchen. I don't know why they've got kitchens, because they, they don't eat at home. They eat in the diner or the grocery. And it's pretty cool. Nice little lounger. There's our logo that we made. Or chose, I should say. We didn't make it, we chose it. You can't quite read the menu, but you can get really close to it. Daily menu... there. It is a fantastic looking game and it runs really 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 well. It's very stable. Research complete. Anomaly analyzed. Oh outstanding. 1250. That completed the the one, so we're up to 200 a day. That's double the training speed. That's excellent. What are we training? Life from Mars. More applicants. Oh yeah, we'll keep going down the... the tech trees. I really like going down the physics tree for one specific reason, which I'm not going to tell you right now. So I'll just keep spamming my way down the physics tree because we've already got the farm so that's pretty much the main reason you come down here let's get rid of that you don't really need a mox upgrade as we know we're producing three we're only using 0 0.9 or something so i think in the next episode we'll keep an eye on this dome and hopefully We'll get a child sometime during the second song of the colony. That would be like almost a record. So, hope you come back for that. And do take good care of yourself. And I'll see you soon.